we're going to be working on a Galaxy S7 that came in for data recovery. Now, the customer said the phone does power on, but the screen is black. Nothing shows up on the screen. He took it to another shop, actually to a franchise, you break iFix. They replaced the screen, and they said the problem is not the screen. And they sent them here. So hopefully we can figure this out. I already have the board disassembled right here. Now the phone is working. If somebody calls the customer on his phone, on the phone that we are working on now, the phone will ring. So we know the phone is operational. It's just that the screen is black. And like the customer said, replacing the screen did not fix the problem. I worked on this very same issue, I think about two years ago. And I do not know if this motherboard suffers from the same problem. Let me just try to recall what I did last time. It's been a while since I worked on a Galaxy S7. Okay, so we are looking at this chip. About two years ago, I worked on a similar issue, and the problem was due to this Max chip that we see here. Max 77838. I do not know if this phone is suffering from the same problem. <laughs> Let me just do random measurements around the chip. Meter and diode mode. Right now we can eliminate a lot of things as being faulty on the board because the phone is powering on. It's only the display. Okay, so we do not have a short here. I'm just trying to measure components linking to the chip. Go to ohms mode. And we have low resistance. It's not at that short, but it's low resistance. I do not recall what the resistance reading on this component should be. I do not have a board diagram open. I do not have a circuit diagram open. But we do not need to right now. I'm going to go ahead and replace this chip anyway because I had a similar problem with the other phone I worked on. And it was this chip. 240 kilo ohms. That's not a short. And let's measure the resistance. What if we measure this inductor? Nope. And what if we measure here? Zero ohms. Wow, zero ohms. Let's measure one more time. We have a zero ohm reading on this inductor. Inductors should not be reading zero ohms and they're not connected to ground. There's no reason why an inductor would be connected to ground. Right now I'm reading exactly zero ohms, that short. And the inductor is most likely shorting out because of this max chip. I knew it. Let's measure one more time. Zero ohm reading. We got it. If the inductor had low ohm reading, then we would assume that maybe it's a low resistance line, but the inductor is reading zero ohm, that short. Now my meter is off by 0 0.3 ohms. If I touch two probes, you see a reading of 0 0.3, so we know the meter is off by 0 0.3 ohms. So right now, if we got a reading of 0 0.3 when measuring the component, it means the reading is really zero ohms. Look at this, I'm measuring the inductor and we have a reading of 0 0.4 ohms, which is at that short. Okay? So that's a little confirmation that our problem may be this max chip, the same one that we changed a while back walking on the same phone. Let's go ahead and replace the chip and see if that will fix our problem. Now, some of you may be wondering did you check the FPC connector? I already checked the connectors. Okay? I did a visual inspection on the connectors before I started the video and did not notice anything wrong with the board. No liquid damage, no corrosion, no blown components, no missing components, no burnt components. All that I inspected quickly before I started the video. 
just to save the world from complaints. Let's take a look. Right there. And the board is really in mint condition. The customer cares about the data, and the customer is paying a lot of money, many folds of what this phone actually cost if the customer would to buy it used. Data is important. We're going to mark pin number one. It should be right here. And thank you, Thrifty Toolshed, for mailing those silver pens over. They are really useful. Very useful, actually. Nice and gentle. We're going to apply some leaded solder and mix it with unleaded. I was trying to see if we can quickly get rid of unleaded using our hot tweezers and wick. But of course, wicking unleaded is very difficult unless we mix it with leaded so we can lower the melting temperature. And that's why you always see me apply leaded solder over unleaded so we can easily work with solder on those pads. And just like that. And let's get rid of the glare so we can see what we are doing. And Flux is your friend, I always mention it. Yesterday I had a couple of comments where viewers are asking what's the clear liquid that you are using. I always mention it, it's Flux. Amtec 559 Flux. We are a distributor for the Flux. You can find the Flux on our website, just log in to northbridgefix.com, click on shop or search for 559 or Amtec. Great. Let's clean up. And I'm out of the swaps. I do have a box inside, but on my bench, I do not have any. I do not want to get up right now, so let me use this used one here. Very nice. We're going to apply some flux. I have many variations of the Max chip. We use a lot of them for Nintendo Switches or phones. And usually I carry the most common. The chip is already rebuilt. Just like that. And now it's time to be silent. The chip made a connection and now we're gonna reflow it in place. It's gonna settle down in its place. Watch while we apply air, how that chip is gonna move. Perfect. We gotta just knock it from the top. Hopefully not, because if I did touch it from the top, then the solder balls under it will squeeze and we will have to redo the job. Yeah, it looks like we may have squeezed it from the top because look at the solder ball on the left here. I touched the chip from the top by mistake. I think it's game over for this chip. We have to reboil it. What can you do? Let me just 
try it out and see what happens. Maybe I get lucky. If not, then we will have to replace that chip again. Just one simple mistake. You touch the IC. Balls squeeze out. And it's game over. Just connecting the back flux cable and the screen and the battery. And let's see. I'm not sure if the battery is charged or not, but... Nope, nothing. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything on the screen. Let's go ahead and replace the chip again. You see, I think we had a short here. Look at this. Let's see what readings we got right now. I forgot, was it this coil or this coil? Right now we are getting a 15 mega ohm reading here and we are getting a 12 mega ohm reading here. Perfect, so the chip was causing a short on that coil. I was right. And let's not mess it up this time. And the chip is in place. Reflow. And the chip just went in place. Very nice. And I think we did an awesome job. I actually did pretty good today. 12 devices. 10 were a fix and 2 were a no fix and the 2 that were a no fix were Nintendo Switches and I have very good success rate fixing Nintendos but today is not the Nintendo Switch day one of them was a Nintendo Switch Lite and one of them was for a customer who came locally and he was almost 99% sure that we're gonna fix his Switch but it turned out to be a no fix after replacing like 5 chips on the board and a USB-C connector. What can you do? All right, so let's see. Do we still have a short on the inductor? Meter in ohms mode. We do not have a short anymore. We are reading something high, 287 K or mega ohms, I think it's K. Yeah, it's a high value, it's not a short. And let's test inductor number two. And we are reading a high value as well. And we're good, we should be good. Unless there's something else wrong, but we should be good. Let's see, are we feeling lucky today?
So I connected the back charging flex, I connected the screen, I connected the power button, and we're gonna connect the battery. So it looks like the battery is dead because I'm not seeing anything on the screen. Let's plug the charging cable and see what happens. I just want to see an image. That's it. That's all I want to see. All I want to see is an image. I'm not seeing an image. Now the customer said he did take it to a shop and they replaced the screen, but what if the screen is also bad on this? What if? Is it possible? I do not think I have a screen for the S7 in the shop here, but we did get rid of the short on the coil. I mean, the area looks perfect. Where we soldered the chip, the area looks perfect. Let me just reflow that chip. One more time, quick. And we're good. I mean, I had no doubt the chip was soldered on properly, but still. You did see that we got rid of the short on the coil. So we did something good. But I'm not gonna proceed to do anything else unless we try a new screen because it's going to be a waste of time to troubleshoot the board further without trying a new screen first. Let's try it one more time. Battery is connected, screen connected, the back cable is connected. And just one last time before we end it. The phone just went up to 1.9 amps before it was going up to 0.7 amps. So the short may have played a role in the phone not taking a full charge. 1.9 amps, but nothing on the screen. We're gonna have to try another screen. We're gonna have to try another one and see how it goes. All right, so it's a no-go. We'll order another screen, or maybe we can find one in our shop here, and we'll take it from there. We did get rid of the short on that coil, and the short was caused by the faulty IC. So we did something good, but it's not enough. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video, even though it was a no-fix. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.